Okay. Um, so um, maybe short introduction. So this is Johannes working for this company. Well, not a kind of <laughs> company with a similar name, Six Wunderkinder. I'm Danny uh, working for Groupon. Um, this talk is called More Android Code Puzzles because two years ago at JoyCon Amsterdam we did a, like the first part of it. It was bit very easy to show like Android pitfalls because fragments were new and you had all these Android 2 devices flying around. So it took some time to find some new puzzles uh, without all these things um, that we do now. Um, we have to warn you, um, you are our lab words because this talk is designed for JoyCon Amsterdam on Tuesday. So we basically finished it this morning. Uh, so we haven't tried it. Uh, we will totally be out of time. We have 60 slides for 45 minutes. So Hassan had to push us from stage afterwards. To fall asleep, one of the two. Let's see. Um, yeah, maybe Hannes can explain how this whole thing works, and then let's start. Working? No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't know if everyone. No, no, it's called um, 1, 2, 3. Um, Basically, can you no problem. Um, well, basically, we have to move all the chairs to the side, please. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. No, we are just uh, showing you code. Actually, it's shortened code. Um, so, please don't look at typos and stuff like that. So, well, there will be usually no compiler errors, and it won't compile. Um, we will just ask you questions about that code, usually what happens if you execute that. There will be several answers. Um, well, we just make a poll. You can raise your hands when you think, okay, answer A is okay or answer B is okay. Then we show solutions, explain something, and we go on. So it's basically a little game show. Yeah. Okay. And we expect everybody to uh, raise your arm so else this tone won't work. If you just sit there and fall asleep, we can just go home. Uh, if you do, as this talk was designed for Amsterdam, we have this awesome subtle show for bikes. <laughs> <laughs> so the one who knows everything afterwards can grab one. Um, so let's start. Um, this talk was meant to be advanced. I think after the last talk, this is more a beginner's talk. So if this one was intermediate, we are beginners. <laughs> <laughs> but ho yeah, and, and, I mean, we never did the first part at the Android start uh, because we thought so it's like you're, you're so expert, uh, you know everything. But you're a test lab, so let us know afterwards uh, how this works and if you knew everything. So let's start. Uh, I will probably look at the screen and you go there. OK, very, very simple one. So we have an Android application, um, so something called extends application, and we have the onTerminate method, and I put a lock there, and we just want to know when I close the last, last activity of that application, what happens? Do I see the lock output immediately? Maybe it, I see it, but not immediately, only after some garbage collection. That's Java, right? Or maybe I only see it when the user does this task manager thing and swipes away the application. Or maybe that would be D. Uh, we never see the lock output. So who thinks that's A? Who thinks B? Who thinks C? OK, and where's the D? I told you, you know, you know all this stuff. So this was a simple one. You never see this log output and tell you why. Because this, basically this method will never be called. It's for like emulated environment, whatever this means. Maybe on an emulator, it doesn't work on any motion. So basically don't use this method because it will not be called. And this is also a nice one. And what is tricky and please learn how the whole thing works. Um, this is not a puzzle, so we have some, some things have like intermediate slides to just tell you like stuff we didn't put in puzzles, but you might want to know. You want to do this one? Yeah, sure. It's a simple one. Uh, I think everybody knows the request feature for the progress bar. And ice cream sandwich, this thing was visible by default. So as soon as you requested that, you had a little spinner. And after ice cream sandwich starting with the bean, it's hidden by default, which is way nicer, I think. OK, next puzzle. Um, you have to know the Android lifecycle. So let's do something with lifecycles. That's fun, right? Imagine an application who has like lock, uh, basically lock output. I call them trace here in like every of the uh, locks uh, of the lifecycle methods, like on start, on pause, on resume, all this stuff. And while I'm on on create, after the super on create, I call finish. The question is, what from those lifecycle locks will I see? Will I see the whole thing on create, then finish, then 
it will keep on uh, starting my activity, on start, on resume, and then start shutting it down because I called finish, right? On pause, on stop, and destroy. Or do you think, no, I don't think it, will, it keeps on starting the thing because I called finish and on create. Um, he goes directly into on pause, on stop, on destroy. So not start the whole thing, but at least tear down the whole thing. Or do you think it's on create, finish, and then directly on destroy, so skipping on stop and all the other ones? Or do you think, I called finish, so I just trace finish, I won't even see, he will stop immediately. Or do you think, uh, there's an exception because I'm calling finish in your on create method. Okay, who says A? <laughs> who says B? Okay, so some. Who thinks D? Oh, so C. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, majority right now. D. And E? Who thinks? Okay. I think majority was right again. Um, so basically what happens when you call on finish, the system starts stopping, starting your activity, but it will start the teardown process immediately. So you won't go to on resume and on start, so you won't go to on stop and the other ones that basically belong to each other. So it just directly goes to on destroy. Um, yeah? At least I saw it in the test. <laughs> but it's a good, 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 good thing. When is it not called? Okay. Yeah, we finish up ourselves, not the system. Um, why did I mention this as a puzzle? As quite simple. Um, because be careful when you do the super and uncreate in an activity, it basically starts your all those fragments you probably have, because fragments are a nice thing, right? So there will be a lot of lifecycle methods still going on and initializing all your fragments before uh, the whole thing starts to tear down, because onCreate will finish. If you want to know something, uh, use this as finishing, because that will go to true. Um, maybe Hannes will tell us something about doing a UI puzzle. Oh, I did this one, okay. Um, well, we're on our styles and themes. So I wrote a little style for my activity which sets a color, which is actually red, I think, I hope, and which Studio told me. Um, I set a text color and a text size for the text widget. And then I have a frame layout, which I use for a row in a simple list view, where I define a layout height from 20 of 25 dp. In there, there's my text view, which is web content, has on text, hello world, and I execute that inside of my adapter Array it up in this case, I think, with the get view method and I inflate it with the call you see. The, the simple question is what does the row look like? Is it A? See, hello world in my row, it's 50 dp high, it's red, and wrap. I have a hate there, you, Corey, you changed that. I didn't change anything. Oh, it would be it. <laughs> B would be. 50 dp red text, but the row height would be 25 dp high. The C would be hello world, we have the normal text size, then I said that it's gray, and the row height is wrapping the text. D, normal size text, in gray, or your default device color, and the row height of fixed 25 dp, or E, you have an unsupported operation exception. Well. Starting with A, who thinks A? Nobody. B? Yeah. C? I, I think I saw a hand there. Yes. That was one. D? No. Oh, and who thinks there will be an exception? Nobody. Danny? Yep. It's A, actually. Reason for that is we're inflating the, la the layout row with null, not with the view parent. The seam gets applied, but all the layout information in your root element of the view you did just inflate goes away, which means these 25 dB layout hay are just removed if you don't have a view parent. So layouting only works for the root element if you have the view parent, if you don't, you're screwed. Do we have a next slide? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, sorry, it, it's in the activity, of course. Uh, <laughs> your, your style is applied to activity. You set the theme. Uh, sorry, I should have explained more. We assume in a lot of things because we can't write so much code on, a, on the slide. If I write a theme there, the theme is applied to the activity. So the activity has a theme. This theme is applied to the inner view, but the layout parameters aren't because they don't have a view parent. Actually, there are cases where you can inflate with now. I think with a dialog fragment, you have some issues there, but usually you should always use a view parent if you have the possibility. It's just convenient to use no, now. Don't do it. OK, let's do another one. Um, I don't like UI, so I have to do something different. Um, menus. Menus are cool. Um, let's assume we have a fragment and activity, which belong together. Uh, the fragment called set has options menu true because it wants to do something with the, with the menus. And both are overriding the on options menu selected. Uh, so we have a lock in the fragment and we have a lock in the activity. And actually one before and one after the super call. Because what I want to know here is what is the order of the lock output? What will we see? So will we see in activity, done activity? So basically the activity does it work first and then the fragment can check if it wants to do something? Or is it like in activity it starts and it goes to the super on create, then it asks the, all the fragments and then it go, uh, comes back to the activity? Or is the fragment maybe first? Um, yeah, uh, it's the fragment first and then the activity. So who thinks this is A? Only Hassan? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> who thinks B? So. That's a lot. Who thinks the fragment gets it first? Okay, we also have some fragment fans here. So let's check. Um, so I think the two people here were right. Um, uh, okay. So just uh, forget to put a third slide here. So basically, it's very important that uh, the activity handles those things first. And if you. Uh, so if you have something that is depending and handling in both, so make sure uh, that uh, you do it in your activity first and they don't like interfere with each other. It doesn't matter if it's like inflated from the fragment or the activity, this is really important. So the order will always be activity first and then if he doesn't want this to handle this, then the fragment. Yeah, you can. The point is, if you the activity set is already has used this option items, you don't go a, a to the fragments. That's why uh, it's not called like the A. Hmm. That's why it's important to use the Boolean, right? Yeah. Tell the system that it's handled. So, um, do we have another did you know? Hannes, do you want to tell us about this? Oh, which, which one? Oh, oh, that's a nice one, that's a nice one. Actually, cursor implements closable. Um, but it didn't do that before ICS. Implementing interfaces in this case is um, a very strange thing if that changes because it's not reflected inside of the documentation. There are no API flags on an import. And actually the compiler doesn't complain because you compile with a version with no set that only crashes if you deploy it on an older device. And then just you have these unsupported methods exception, I think. Yes, uh, probably a method, not uh, abstract method, something yeah, like that. Yeah. So that's a thing that changed, and which is, I think, fallen to this multiple times. It's really, yeah. really, really be careful with this when you do something like close query and with close builds. It will fail, and you have no chance of failing before. Yeah. Uh, let's continue with a puzzle. Um, we just had this nice menu thing, right, about like the order. Let's do the same again, but uh, with um, activity results, I think. So again, we have a fragment and we have an activity. And um, so we are starting an activity. Um, do we have the start call? Yeah, so the fragment does the start activity for result. So the fragment does it. And both are overriding the on activity result. And again, we have some log outputs, like before and after the super calls. And I wanna know who's handling this. So is it like first the fragment completely, then the activity, and we have A. Um, it's the other way around. First, first, it's a fragment first, B is activity first, or is it like uh, uh, activity first, but in the super call the fragment, and uh, yeah, 
the fragment completely and then the activity, or maybe it's just the fragment who handles this, or maybe it's just the activity who handles this. So let's see, who thinks A, fragment first? Who thinks B, activity first? Who thinks uh, activity and then in a super call goes through fragments? Oh, that's a couple of hands. Who thinks uh, D, only the fragment? And who thinks E, activity? Okay. I guess, as always, Hassan was right. <laughs> the important thing is this one. The, uh, the fragment does start activity for result. It didn't do get activity dot start activity for result. So both have has the possibility to start an activity. And if the fragment is starting it, the activity will not be called an on activity result. Uh, only the fragment because it was the one starting it. That's yeah, something I didn't know actually before I tried it. Yes. To the super fragment class, which doesn't do anything with it. Yeah. Okay, what do we have next? Uh, that's something about UI, it's probably yours. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. You remember this style, which is now actually really, really applied to the started activity? And in the height of that activity, I have this cool call toast make, test, uh, make text. With my activity, my text, hello world, a length, and I do show it. Method doesn't matter. I have my theme on my activity. Question is now, how does a toast look like? Basically, nearly the same answers as before. There will be a hello world, probably. It could be 50 dp red. It could be normal size and red. It could be 50 dp and gray. Or your standard and red text color and a gray background, uh, and a gray text. Or we have a runtime exception in this case. Who thinks a 50 dp red text on your toast? Nobody. Who thinks normal size text in red on your toast? Okay. Who thinks c? Hello world, 50 dp in gray. <laughs> well, some people. Okay. Who thinks d? Hello world, normal size gray text. Oh, the majority. Who thinks there will be a runtime exception? Because normally... Unfool them of your exceptions. Yeah, I, see, I should remove the exceptions probably. Actually, most of the time you see that you see that with get application context. Can you show the answer? You should just look if he raises his hand. <laughs> yeah, actually it's 50 dp gray text. The theme is applied partially, which is very, very strange. <laughs> um, I actually tried it. I would have sus suspected that I get 50 dp red text. Actually, the text color seems to be fixed. The text size you can override. There is no real style for the toast, as far as I know. There is a toast theme, toast-like theme, if you want to create your own toast. At least in KitKat, there is in the repositories. But you can't override the theme for the toast itself. Yep. If you go to the next slide, please, if you want to have your standard toast, just use the application context. Toast is one of the few things you actually can start with an application context, which you usually shouldn't do for an activity. There are ways to do that, but standardly, thing is cra it crashes. And you can use what you said. You can use set view. So if you want to, st <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> of, of course, of course, or use a better library. <laughs> Okay. Okay, let's continue. Move on. Did you know, Hannes, you want to do this? You're just standing here. Okay, I mean, I'll do this. So always remember, uh, on focus change listener will not be called initially when you go in your fragments and the thing gets a focus because it's not a focus change. So be careful with that one. I folded this so I edit it here. Okay, let's do another one. Um, yeah, I let me do it because I went into this. So. What I was trying to do here, I was not my own create. On create is on a main thread, we all know this. Uh, and I wanted to do something uh, a little bit later. So I thought, okay, let's do this. Run on your thread, put a variable, and put something in there. For here, it's just a trace. And then we have two other traces. So we have one before the call, 
one after, and then we have the thing uh, that I want to delay. The question is, what is the trace output that we see here? So is it before, after, delay? Or is it before? And then one of the two, depending on how often you call it, how fast is your phone, whatever, how busy is your phone? Oh, is it before, then the delay, and then the after, and then after? So who thinks that the order is before, after, delayed? Okay, I thought the same. <laughs> who thought thinks that's B and then a random order? That's a lot of people. And who thinks it's before, delayed, and after? <laughs> you should really listen to that guy. <laughs> Why? Let's look at the Android source code. Run on UI thread checks uh, if you are on the UI thread, and if it does, it just calls run. <laughs> so you won't expect this on a runnable that's like immediately before you even return that it was run already. So really be careful with that one. If you want to delay something, use handler.post delay or something. We have another, did you know? Oh, that's one from you, but I can at least read it. Um, you sh just shouldn't set an on item click listener on a spinner. Just don't. Yeah, it's funny, it has the method set on item click listener, but if you try, it will always crash. At one time. Yeah, of course. So that's a weird one. I don't know. If, let's ask Google why. Ben? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the next one. Um, let's do something again with uh, new thread and runnables. So now I'm an on create. On create is on the main thread. We all know this. So um, I want to do something to push it to background. So it doesn't matter about uh, on create here. I just wanted to show you I'm going to background now. And then I'm going to do a fragment transaction, which is kind of a UI thing, right? So I do a begin transaction. I'm adding a fragment. Uh, I'm committing it. And the thread has really started. So there's no pitfall there. Uh, the question is what happens here? Uh, will I get an exception because I'm calling begin transaction on a background thread? Will I get an exception because I'm calling commit, to commit the whole transaction on a background thread? Or will this whole thing just uh, work and the fragment will be shown? Or will the whole thing works but nothing happens because I didn't do it on main thread? So a lot of options. So who thinks, hey, we get an exception when we try to do a transaction on background thread? No one. Who thinks it's same thing but in the commit message? Oh, that's a lot of hands. Who thinks we will have uh, yeah, everything works as I expected? So just do the thing and show the fragment. Okay. And who thinks nothing will happen, although there is no exception? Okay, we fooled some with this. Uh, everything just works. So one of the few things uh, in Android for fragment transaction don't even have to be on a main thread, except when you do uh, uh, execute pending transaction. So Commit doesn't do anything at the moment. It's just like preparing everything in a queue. And if you want, really want to do it now, uh, call execute pending transaction. But then be sure you're on the main thread. Else just the system will do it the next time if the main thread runs. So I found it interesting because normally everything has to be done on the main thread, not here. OK, um, let's do something with layouts. Honest? Oh, um, which one was it? Oh, we, we, we have a state rather. At least no styles this time? <laughs> no, a selector. Sorry, sorry. We have a selector with uh, two items. It's summed up, looks something like that, and the thumbs down is basically the opposite. Um, the first one is for the enabled state, not focused, not pressed, and the other one is for the pressed state. Then in my layout, I have an image button and setting this selector as drawable. And then just set focusable, set focusable in touch mode because I want actually to select something. Put that into my layout, my activity, start it, no theme. And well, what did I see? Do I see something like that? Do I see something like that or just that? Who thinks, A, I see a thumbs up? Who thinks B? Thumbs down. And who thinks I just see nothing because I just switch, switch on my phone or no, actually the phone is on. Okay. Show us. I see nothing. Yep. First state is only for enable true, not focused, not pressed. 
Second state is for pressed. Actually, if I enable focusable true and focusable and touch mode true and have nothing else on my screen, my element is focused and there's actually no state for focused. Next slide, please. So if you do that, just add a default state at the bottom. Very important at the bottom because it goes through them in order, the system goes through them in order and grabs the first one who matches. So in this case, this one would be grabbed when, when focused because that's the last one who matches to anything because, yeah, it doesn't have some any, any condition. Or use selectors with all conditions. But if you don't, you can have a strange behavior and you usually only see it later in your development. Okay. No, uh, that's your one. Okay, let's use. So what do we have here? Uh, I think this, so I have an activity. Uh, this activity was started with a flag activity single top. Why did I do it? Because I want to um, restart it basically and once like it to be get updated. Um, like I had this uh, real thing, so we had like uh, an, an activity and when I was at eBay, we like a search result page and we just wanted to update it when the user filters. So don't start it again, just update it. For updating, we have the on new intent method, so that's easy. And this will be called. Uh, and what do we have? We have, so I'm grabbing a trace, so tracing something, and first, the value of the thing that I will give in. Uh, so it's, there's no error here in uh, lowercase, uppercase. That's a mistake here. So we want to grab this extra that I just put in for, this, for the second start of the activity. Once from the intent that was given, and one from the intent I'm getting from get intent. So basically, I'm printing always two values. Then I'm calling super dot new intent, and then I'm doing the same thing again. So this intent here and the get intent. And what will this thing print when I run into on new intent? So not the first start, like, but the second one. Uh, will it print the value? And so the thing that goes in has the value, and the get intent doesn't have it. But after the super on new intent, then my intent is set, and then after, and then I see value value. Or is it B? Will I see value immediately when I'm in on your intent? And of course, after as well. Or will I see the null before and the null afterwards? So that comes on intent in, but the get intent still is null. Who thinks A? One, two, three, okay. Who thinks B? Okay, and who thinks C? Okay, let's see if Hassan was right. Of course he was. So what's the problem here? Um, get intent will always return you the original intent this activity was started with. It doesn't matter how often you started. I think you had this in a, in a real application we once had. Maybe you want to tell us a second about this? Yeah, there's a very, very strange case for that. If you start your activity from a notification, giving it an intent with some data from your notification, show me this page or something like that, that actually sticks so if you restart the application later, it still has this data and it's very hard to get rid of it until you close this application. We actually had that setting a uh, geo-coordinate uh, for some values and we were wondering why the heck it was always opening with these coordinates because we just opened it once from the toast, uh, from, the, from the notification bar. So be very, very careful with these intents. Um, the suggested solution when you look at Stack Overflow, and we all do, right, is and on your intent, use set intent to set it, and then you get intent will work. So let's try. A um, little bit different puzzle, but we want to look at set intent. So um, I'm in, I guess, an activity. Um, yeah. So we call get intent. Then I want to modify it. So I'm adding something for the extra with the thing that was there. So there was, I'm asking, was there something? Uh, zero is my default thing. And then let's do plus one and set it again, and then let's show the tools that uses get intent. So it comes in, come in get grabbing it, increasing it, and setting it, and then we call it get intent. Um, so what is the toast message here? Um, after I'm putting the app to background and grabbing it again. So who thinks, and then repeating this. So who thinks it's like one, two, three? So every time on resume once, we will increase the thing. Um, who th uh, so yeah, let's do later. So first the options. So B, who thinks it will always be one? Because it was like zero in the beginning. I'm adding one. 
who thinks it's zero, so every, all time zeros. Um, and the last one will be sometimes A, one, two, three, or sometimes maybe B, one, 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 uh, depending on something. So who thinks it's A? No, let's do the thing. Okay, some people think it gets increased. Who thinks it will stay one all the time? Okay, some. Who thinks it will be zeros? Okay. And who thinks it will sometimes A and sometimes B? Okay, let's check. It's actually this, so Hassan was wrong. Why is that? Um, let's look at what set intent does. Uh, set intent sets the member intent to this thing that you give in. That's all it does. The problem here is uh, when we get an app from the background, we don't know what was happening. Was it like recreated or was it just still a memory and then I grab it again? So, late, so if you want to don't keep activities, one of the best developer options you can find on the phone, uh, then you will see the worst thing, it will always return 111. So it's like emulating that a system cleans up your activity. And that's why I said sometimes, because depending on how the system like, will throw you out because Facebook is getting using all your memory, then it will recreate everything and your nice intent here is lost because the, all the system does is putting it to this member. There's no persisting of this thing. So next time it will be back on the original one. So what do we learn? Try not to use set intent. And if you do, make sure you persist your state and then setting it. So do, this, do the thing and, I mean, it's always an Android, right? Persist your state. Because you never know what the system does with your activity in the background. Ah, that's you. You get all the UI puzzles. Okay, I don't know why. I, I hate doing UI stuff. Actually, um, I hope everybody of you used the transition drawable. Well, probably not. What does it do? I never <laughs> use it. <laughs> it just allows you to make a transition between two states which is basically what I have there. I have a transition drawable with two items, a transparent thing and a black, basically only switching between two colors, and I can trigger a transition from one color to the next. What I'm doing is um, I have an image button, which is padding on the left side of 100dp because there's other content, and an image, which is basically an Android image, is a star, a gray one, I think. And then in my activity, I have this method, do background transition, where I give it a button, set as background resource my transition drawable, and well, that's it. So what happens after I call this method? You cannot, because it wasn't going compiled, there's an end missing. Um, yes, I said, I said no, no typos. <laughs> that means I didn't copy it out of the code. Damn. Okay, there are several options. I have a 100dp point, 100dp image button with a transparent background and the star is in the center of the button. Uh, other possibility, I have a 100 point, 100cp with a black background and the star in the center. Then I have a star size transparent background button somewhere on my screen. And D, of course, the same thing, only a star sized and black background. Direction. I'm very sorry. Say for A and B, you have padding. <laughs> so A, a padded star with transparent background. No one. B, padded star with black background. Okay. Two things. C, it's only the star with a transparent background. And D, a star with black background. Did you raise your hand? <laughs> For the log, Hassan did not know any of the answers. <laughs> Actually, yes, it's a tricky one. And yes, I made mistakes in my code. One thing to note, I have to change that. <laughs> um, just show the answer. You get that one. First thing, the simple thing, a transparent background. 
I didn't start the transition. I just set it as background. It's not started automatically. I have to start it myself, which you do with get background, cast a two transition uh, drawable, and then say start transition with a timer. And it works very nicely. The second thing is the padding. It actually is lost. If you set background with a transition drawable, you lose all your padding. You have to apply it manually. It's actually something we encountered for a nice, simple animation. And uh, I think it was a star. It jumped to the left side. And I didn't know why. But actually, if you run this thing on uh, Lollipop, it works. So it was broken until KitKat. And when I wrote this puzzle, I tried it on my Nexus 7, which had got, uh, which got a Lollipop the same day. And I nearly lost my head because my puzzle wasn't working anymore. I was executing the code and it looked nice. And I said, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, so just be very, very careful with transition drawables. Don't, if you see the padding get lost, apply it after that, after the transition. So get padding, add padding. Um, it's just an error on the framework. Yeah, check padding. Next. Oh, okay, let on. me do that. Um, we had like two puzzles ago. We had this single top thing that I used. There's another one in the Android SDK called. It's called single task. And this is the documentation about it. And basically what it's telling is if you have like a stack of activities and uh, you want to start one that is already there, with single task, it won't restart it and putting it to the end of the queue, but like grabbing the thing and giving it on your intent, which might be nice. It sounded nice, so let's give it a try. Um, so we have, um, I guess, an activity here. Um, so and we start start activity for result with a new intent. And then we have one activity result to trace to trace when it's done. So there's one trace started, one trace done. So very easy. Um, so the whole thing was uh, started originally with the single task uh, directly in a manifest. And the question is, what happens when we run this thing? Um, will it be A? And there was an exception uh, in the start activity for result. Maybe it doesn't work for a single task. Um, is it B? We see the started, and then we see the done. So it started and immediately returns. Or is it started, but done is never recalled? It doesn't matter what happens in your activity that is started. Um, oh, OK, I mixed up B, sorry. So let's go to B. So started, and it's done if the activity that we are starting returns. So like the normal flow, we're starting something, waiting, and if it returns, we get done. So B is. Uh, it started, and it's just ignoring whatever my result was. Um, so that done will never be called. And D is it started and immediately called done, independent of what the other activity wanted to do. So who thinks A? This whole thing doesn't work. I cannot start use start activity with single task. So we have one. Who thinks it started and then goes the normal flow until the so thing will be started, and afterwards, if this is done, we will be called and done. Okay. Then it won't be a puzzle, right? Uh, it's C, uh, what is so started, and what done will never be called. OK? And D, it started and immediately returns. Kind of a majority here, yeah? Majority is mostly red. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, single task is really tricky. You cannot use it in combination with start activity for result. So the nice thing with start activity for result won't work if you're a single task. I don't know why, actually, but I found this nice paragraph here in the Google documentation. And it says, single task and single instance are so different from how Android works. Really, really be careful with it. Because most of the time, it's not what you want to do with it. Let's do a did you know. Yeah, and probably it was the last thing we do, because I got a time warning. Um, actually, that's code out of the email address pattern from Lollipop, from the repo. Um, who of you uses this pattern to validate its email address or his email address? Pattern validator, you use it? Uh, nobody? Really? You don't validate email addresses, right? Why should you? Yes, sometimes there's someone on product who says, OK, no, show this button, uh, enable this button only when there's a valid email address. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the next. That's always what I'm asking myself. No. 
No, actually, you see it a lot on Stack Overflow when people ask for validating email patterns. That's the code. This code didn't change over the last years. What did change was the specification for URLs and for that email patterns. So that works if you're in the Western world and only people with nice email addresses uh, try to enter that into your app. It will crash as soon as you go to China or to some other country because there are no Unicode, oh, probably Germany, yes, but we're also old, we all have the, not the umlaut, uh, umlaut um, domains. So just, if you use that, uh, be very, very careful. It is broken, basically. It will give you false for a lot of valid email addresses. So it won't crash, right? But it will it won't, it won't crash, it yeah. will compile it. Just to say, no, that's not a valid, valid email address. And uh, if you're doing the same thing we do and use an email address to enter the application, your customers can't enter the application, probably after registering on web. <laughs> so. Yep, basically that's it. Uh, you can skip through all the slides if you want to. Uh, there are some more puzzles. We just don't have any more time. We have three more minutes? Three minutes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Come on. Simple one. Simple one. Um, what do I do? I have a new thread. I start the thread so it's in the background. And what I do is um, I. What do I. Oh, yeah. I send a broadcast yeah. with my action, and I have a listener probably on a list activity which gets the um, broadcast receiver, which has an on-receive, and just calls get list adapter, which is an array adapter so that it doesn't crash, and notify that it has changed. Very simple puzzle. What happens? A, an error on run, because I can't send broadcast on application context. B, error on run, because broadcasts have to be on the main thread, actually. C, an error on receive because notify data set changed has to be run on the main thread. And D, yep, everything's fine. Thanks, bye. So who thinks A, I can't send a broadcast on the application context? Nobody? Who thinks B, I have to send a broadcast on the main thread? Who thinks C? Okay. And who thinks D? Hassan thinks D. <laughs> Hassan thinks it's uh, of course. <laughs> 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 yes, it's right. One of the nice thing in on receive is it runs on the main thread. So yes, of course you need to call notify notify data set change on the main thread, but on receive is on the main thread. So everything works, and um, that's actually the standard broadcast manager. Yes, it also is on the local broadcast manager. It also, it's always on your eye thread. Yeah, and it's not using the calling thread. I actually tried it. Called it once on the main thread, once on the background thread. That's why it's on the background thread here, and you're really getting the UI thread. It's a nice thing, and yeah, thanks, bye. I think that was it. Or do we have time for the last one? Because it's basically the same. OK, yes. Um, I have somewhere in my application a static final string array with the values of A, B, C, which is simple but nice. I have a method somewhere in my activity send broadcast. And I'm putting an extra in there, which is my data, using the local broadcast manager this time to send the broadcast. And after I send the broadcast, I change the first element of data to D. Somewhere else in my application, I receive the whole thing, get the string array from the extra, and set the last element, 0, 2, 1, yes, to F. After on receive finished, what's the content of the static final string array data? Is it A, ABC, B, DBC, C, DBF? Or do I have D, a concurrent modification exception? Everyone knows that. Or E, um, my compiler complains because data is final. So who thinks A? Okay, who thinks B? Okay. 
who sings C? Who sings D, concurrent modification exception? Ah, I should have used a vector or a list. And who sings E, compiler error? Oh, OK. We have at least some. Okay. What did sure. Hassan say? What did Hassan say? Um, what Hassan does say Hassan something. say? <laughs> I think it depends on how your uh, device is running because sometimes it's getting previously into the uh, parcel uh, and sometimes it, it gives you immediately the object. So it can happen, it's depending, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> oh, I, I, maybe you are. Maybe you are right, but I never occurred that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Can I show you? Yes, show. Sure. It's usually DBF because it doesn't parcel. You, it doesn't serialize. It, sometimes it does. I never record it. Sometimes it does. But usually what the local broadcast uh, manager does is it just gives you the same reference. So you get the same reference to the same array. It is possible. If you say it, I believe you that it can change, but I never record it. Uh, or it never occurred with my application. If you get the same reference, you change the same array. You can access the array. That's true. You can change the contents of the array. You couldn't assign the array because it's final, but you can change the contents. And actually, um, the first line is sure you change it on the static object, but the second thing is it's changing the same reference. If you write, it's not sure that. Okay. In this case, be super careful because it could be. For my application, I actually was working on the. I was using a list and I was working on this list and was changing the content and was wondering why my root content changed. So. Just be super careful with the local broadcast manager because you can get the same reference. Do I have a solution slide there? Yes, um, that's not the case for the normal broadcast that always serializes, even if going to your own application. So just be careful what you get there. Just don't try to change the content of the things you get there. Just copy them into new objects and then work with that. Okay, just to show you what you have missed, and we'll do that some Stammtisch. There were some slides coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and download this one because we wrote it and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and it's free. Okay, uh, party. I <laughs> know. Uh,